Hey guys, I've noticed that Rust has gotten a lot of new players recently because of its recent explosion on Twitch and YouTube and sites like that. And the new players want to know, how do I get some lights? <laughs> and they just want to know how to set up the lights in, in the game. And it's a fair question. Rust doesn't have a nice tutorial or anything like that to explain some of the basics of the game to you. So I'm going to show you how to do some really basic electricity setups and give you things like lights, some solar panels, a switch to turn them off if you want to, and even an auto turret if you found one in an airdrop or if you're able to, to buy one from the outpost or anything like that. So once you get your 2x2 two two set up, or your starter base, however, whichever one you want to build, and you get your things like your furnaces and your bags and your workbench, Something that would be really nice to accompany all of these pleasantries is being able to see at night. So let's do that. First go to your workbench, your, your level 1 workbench. By the way, if you're new to the game, in the item menu, if you scroll down, there's the workbenches. And you want a level 1 workbench. The level 1 will allow you to research and craft advanced items that aren't default blueprints in the game. So go to your level 1 workbench and press E on it to open it, and you'll see the tech tree. This is a, a new addition to Rust added just a couple months ago. The tech tree lets you progress through items that you wouldn't normally be able to craft. You, usually you'd have to find these and research them, but now you can choose the path you want to follow and research them yourself. You need the first four items. So you need, on the electricity branch over here, you want to go for the switch, the small battery, the solar panel, and the ceiling light. So research all four of those, it doesn't take much. Make sure you have one of each of those. If you're looking for the tech trash to help craft the large solar panel here, set up a bag or a starter base near an Oxum's gas station or a supermarket and just look for the green military crates. And there will be you'll get a tech trash in no time. And that so that's the easiest way to get tech trash for the solar panel. Once you get that, put the ceiling light. Put the first one in between two rooms so that it covers more area. Just put it somewhere that makes sense. Next, you want to put down the battery. So you have a small battery. Let's just set it down right here. It's fine. Now you want to go outside and set up the solar panel. So go onto the top of your base and get a solar panel out. Face it north. There's, depending on which server you're on, where your base is on the map, there could be slight variations as to where you should put it. North is a, a, a safe bet. By the way, if there's like trees or like a mountain or something blocking it, the solar panel does have to get direct sunlight. So if there's like a shadow on top of it from a tree, sometimes it won't register the sunlight because there's not any. Sometimes it will, but sometimes it won't. So make sure that you, whenever you're facing it, 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 you know, the sun is hitting it for most of the day. Once you place that down, use the wiring tool. You need a wiring tool. Go to to press Q to open the crafting menu and go to to electrical and craft a wire tool. They're really cheap, only too high quality. And then go here and you'll be able to see the output. You want the output to be 20 during the day. During dawn and dusk it's okay if it's lower, but during the day you want it to be 20. And attach a wire to it. This is, it doesn't cost uh, uh, resources or anything to run the cable like this, so however much you want to use is fine. So I'm going to anchor it over there, and now I'm going to go back inside the base and anchor it here. And we want to put this wire into the power end on the battery, so that this way the solar panel is charging the battery. Now the battery can go to the light. It can just go straight to the light. And after I hook this up, I, I want to talk about something. So the power out on the battery is going to go up the wall and over to the ceiling light. And now we have a light. It's as simple as that. Electricity seems really daunting at first, but you get a solar panel, get a battery, get a light, and hook them all up, and you're good. And whenever the electricity system was first introduced into Rust, you had to build these weird blocker circuits. They were called blocker circuits in order to charge a battery and use it at the same time. So you couldn't charge a battery and use the light. It would either drain it or it would charge it, but it wouldn't do both. That's not the case anymore. They will do that. The battery will take the 18 power in from the solar panel, and then if I put the wiring tool over here, it's only going to output the power that, this, that the ceiling light is actually using. So if you 
hover over the battery here, you can see the active usage is two. So it's going to take the 18 power, 16 of it will charge the battery, and two of it will go to the light. You don't have to build any complex blocker circuits or anything like that. The November 2019 update fixed that. You don't have to do it anymore. Now, a lot of the old electricity videos in Rust, they don't, they're not updated to say like patched or fixed or whatever, but you don't have to do that. So just set it up just like this. Now, let's say that we want more lights. And if you want more lights, you're probably going to have to get a bigger battery and more solar panels. So if you want to do that, let's do a medium battery. You can buy a medium battery at Bandit Camp for just 75 scraps, super cheap. And they're way, way, way better than small batteries. So let's set this right there. The small battery can only output 10 power, but the medium battery can output 50. So, I mean, that's a lot more, you know, the ceiling lights requires two power. You can power a lot of lights with a medium battery. So now we need to hook some solar panels together on the roof and combine them together into the medium battery. And we do that with a root combiner. So first let's put another solar panel down. And you see how I'm, I'm stacking them like this, like right behind each other? I know they're overlapping, but that's fine. They'll still charge, they'll still get the full amount of sunlight even if you stack them like that. So we have two solar panels, but we can't put both of them into the battery. It only has one power in, one power in connection. Right there, power in, you can only hook one thing to it. So what do we use? We use the root combiner, it's this red device here. Go to the workbench, it's one of the ones in that same tree. You see here, we learned the first four, learn the root combiner also, extremely powerful. Go to the roof and put down a root combiner. And a root combiner is combining two power root sources together. So we set it down, now it's going to combine, you see how it has root power 1 and root power 2? You want to combine these two together. So first we're going to hook the first solar panel there, and the second solar panel there. And now the output is 36. So it's taking the 18 from one and the 18 from the second one and combining them into one 36 output. So take that, take the output of the root combiner, and hook that into the medium battery. Power in. They're so hard to find on the medium batteries. Power in. So now the medium battery is charging. And we can go, we can take the power out and plug it into the ceiling light. And now we can add more lights. Added three more lights. The lights have pass throughs. That means pass the remaining power through to the next object. So first we have the, the power running from the battery to the light, and then the pass-through goes to the next light. And then the pass-through goes to the next light. And so on and so forth. So now we have four lights, and the active usage is going to be eight. That means there's four lights, each consuming two power. And that's it. That's how you do lights in Rust. You can add a switch. A switch is exactly what it sounds like. It turns the power on and off. Some people prefer that. Like, they don't like having the lights running during the day. I think that's weird. I like them running all the time. But if you want to conserve power or use your battery for other things and, and help it charge, in between the first light and the battery, put that switch. So the power output... Instead of going to the ceiling light first, we're going to make it go to the switch. So run it over to the switch. You want it to go into the electric input on the switch. And then the output can go to the ceiling light. So now it's all plugged up, but we have an on and off switch. And you turn it on, the lights turn on, turn it off, and the lights are off. And you can actually see that there's no active usage on the battery now. If you turn the switch off, it's charging the battery and not using any power at all. So if, if you need to use something like that, you can. Now let's add a turret to the mix. Auto turrets can be really, really, really powerful. If you're getting online rated, or if you're offline rated, they can be a, a big help too. But they give you a lot of peace of mind whenever it's it's early game. So let's say we want to have a auto turret set up to defend us as we're coming in and out of the base. 
So we'll put the auto turret here. And we need to learn electrical branch. It's this black electrical component here. So open the tech tree and go over to the electrical branch. It's uh, you have to learn splitter first and then electrical branch. The splitters are have very limited use. Just go straight to the the electrical branch. Don't worry about crafting a splitter or anything like that. So learn the electrical branch. And now we want to go from the battery to the electrical branch first. So let's set up our electrical branch. And we'll go take the power output to the branch. This is going to let us have a turret and the lights. That's the, the beauty of the, the electrical branch. Power in on the electrical branch. And you see how there's two outputs here? There's the branch out and the power out. The branch is a specific branch out that lets you configure how much power you want to send in that direction. So if we're going to have an auto turret running off of this branch and then we send all the rest of the power to the lights, we need to specify how much power needs to go to the branch. Well, we need a switch to help the auto turret turn on and off because if our friends want to come in, you need to turn the turret off so they can authorize on it. So we're going to do 10 for the turret, but we need one power in addition to it for the switch because switches use one power on their own just to operate. So I'm going to set it to 11. Now the branch out says 11. Now we take this and run it to our switch on the wall here. And then we'll disconnect the ceiling lights and use this switch for the turret instead. And you need to run this to the power in on the turret. Let's put a gun in there. Some really good guns for early game turrets are the, the pythons. I figured, found out that they hit really hard. Let's get, so we got us a python. Let's get some ammo for it now. Okay, we're gonna put the python in there and some ammo. And now the rest, remember the rest of the power from the battery will go to the power out on this branch. We sent 11 in this direction. All the rest of the power will go this direction. So I want to make it go to the ceiling lights now. So we have an auto turret that can be turned on with a switch and we have lights as well, all from one, one medium battery. So I'm going to hit it And there's our Python auto turret ready to destroy anyone who comes through the front door. And if you need to turn it off to let someone authorize, you just turn it off, they come in and authorize, and then you turn it right back on. I know this; these circuits aren't the most complicated thing, but whenever people are starting to learn Rust for the, for the first time, it's... There's so much to, to learn in the game, and I think these practical applications like this that just show you how to do the basics will be helpful in people learning the electricity system. I've, I myself started, when the electricity system came out, I was super overwhelmed. I didn't even want to learn it because it's just so much. But what I started, how I learned it is I, start, I started with simple circuits. Just learn how to do the absolute basics then add one more component to it, then add one more component to it, and eventually you, you expand your knowledge of the workings of the electricity system over time in, in, in increments instead of trying to like cram all of the systems into your head at once. So hopefully this, this electricity guide and these light and, and solar panels and auto turret circuits will be helpful for new players. Thanks for watching.